Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gabe's to here. This is the tank guide for normal and heroic chromog. Uh, overall tanking for this fight is fairly simple, but will require uh, quick attention to your own cooldowns when appropriate. Uh, of course, tank swaps, which is standard fare, and dealing with some of the basic raid mechanics like the rest of the raid. So let us, let us, let us is also delicious, but let's get started. So the primary mechanics for tanks are Fists of Stone and Warped Armor. For Fists of Stone, uh, you and your tank partner will need to be stacked on top of one another throughout all the standard phases of the fight. So basically when the boss is active and attacking you, you should be stacked on top of each other. You also want to be at least 15 yards away from other raid members, and this will force the Fists of Stone attack to hit the current tank as well as the other off tank. It will always hit two players within 15 yards for pretty heavy physical damage. So that's the basic idea of it. Uh, from there, you also have to deal with Warped Armor, which is the primary tank swap mechanic. This ability is cast um, unreliably, I guess I, guess I would say. It uh, will reduce movement speed and also increase physical damage taken with each stack. But the problem is it can cast as frequently as every 13 seconds or so, but sometimes be delayed by up to 25 or 26 seconds. So because of that, it also lasts a minute, I should mention, uh, tank swaps are not precise, essentially. Uh, the best thing that you can probably do for managing this stack count is at the start of the fight or after every uh, grasping earth phase, which we'll talk about in a moment, you want a fresh tank to get the boss. So that is the tank without any stacks. That tank will go up to two stacks of warped armor, and then a tank swap will occur. And the other tank, the secondary tank, will go to two or three before the next Grasping Earth phase begins. The number of stacks that that second tank gets just depends on, uh, you know, like I said, the random timing that you get. So, generally speaking, the strongest of the two tanks should be tanking second in all those transition periods, because that person may have to go up higher stack count. Uh, when you get up to two or possibly even three stacks, the damage you take from some of the basic abilities will be quite significant. So just be aware of that and plan accordingly. The most critical of those basic abilities I just mentioned is Slam. Uh, this is cast around every 25 seconds by the boss, and it deals heavy physical damage, but the damage is reduced the further away from the boss you stand. Now, because as a tank, you have to be in melee range pretty much at all times, this damage can be quite high. So it's critical that you stand at max melee range uh, as much as possible. The main problem, however, is that slam damage is increased by the stacks of warped armor. And like I mentioned before, if you have two or possibly even three stacks, this damage will be very high. So that is the time you want to use your personal cooldowns, particularly if you are tanking at the time, which you probably will be. If you have two or more stacks and slam is about to hit, try to use a cooldown on yourself or call for an outside one, uh, particularly if you're not full health, because otherwise you can expect to die with a high warp armor stack. The other primary ability you might have to avoid is Rippling Smash. This is also cast around every 25 to 30 seconds, but it faces a random direction. So you'll see the boss turn and look toward people, as you see he's doing there and then he'll ripple the earth in a straight wave there. Um, if the tanks are tanking on the far right or far left side, it's much less likely that they will get hit by it, but just be aware that it can go near you and you want to sidestep it if possible. The last basic mechanic to avoid as a tank is reverberations. And you see these are the yellow discs. Uh, these fire off anytime the tank, or excuse me, anytime the boss uses slam or a rippling smash, at which point the discs will spawn in random locations and shoot out. Uh, they don't do super severe damage, but you know, everything adds up, so do your best to sidestep those if you can. Now, the Rune of Grasping Earth, which I mentioned before in the tank swap section, is kind of the second phase of the fight almost. During this period, the boss will stop attacking tanks and he will start to do his series of, of Rune of Grasping Earth followed by Thundering Blows. Uh, during this period, you'll see a series of small yellow runes that spawn around the room, 
And these runes will grasp the first person that they find at the end of the boss's channeled cast. During that grasp time, you will be prevented from being knocked in the air by the thundering blows hit. You also won't take the damage. So even as tanks, it's critical that you get into a yellow rune by yourself with no one else in it uh, before the end of the channel. You can see along the right side of the screen there, we have a yellow and a orange raid marker. These indicate two locations of the nearest um, grasp spots for the two tanks. The runes always spawn in the same locations, so you can decide on a position that you're going to go to every time, you know, and mark it or just remember it, and that way it'll be saved for you as a tank so that you can be near the boss and never have to worry about not being able to get there. You will notice that the grasping hands that have a hold of you have health, and as soon as it dies, you will be released. So you want to attack your own grasping hand, but you don't want to kill it until the boss has completed his channel of thundering blows because you don't want to get hit by that and knocked in the air. So just do your best to DPS it down on your own and uh, you probably or maybe will need help from other people depending on your DPS, but just make sure that people break you out fairly soon after the thundering blows ends so you can get back into melee range with your tank partner. So that's all the basic mechanics, but it is worth noting that at 30% health, the boss will enter Frenzy. And at this point, uh, as you might expect, his damage increases. So be aware of that as a tank. Be ready to use your cooldowns if you have any. Um, and he will also use his basic abilities more frequently, which shouldn't affect you too much uh, other than perhaps slam. Um, but generally speaking, this is the time that the raid will be using all their DPS cooldowns and bloodlust and whatnot. So hopefully the boss won't spend too much time in this period. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, fairly simple fight to tank mechanically. Most of it's spent standing in one spot and just watching your own cooldowns and tank swaps, as well as getting into your yellow rune when you need to. So as always, good luck. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. You know, I've spent a lot of time wondering if Chromog even wears pants. I bet he doesn't. I don't know why you would. I would just, you know, have my boxers on underneath and just hide behind my desk like David Letterman. <laughs>